Good evening, and welcome to Thankful Missionary Baptist Church Thursday Night Bible Study. My name is Minister Terry Moore, and on tonight, we're going to study from the book of 1 Samuel, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. This is the prayer of Hannah after dedicating her son Samuel back unto the Lord. Before we go any further, let us go to God in prayer. Father, it's in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we bow our heads, Lord God, thanking you and praising you, Lord God, for this another beautiful day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you've kept us all day long, Lord God. You didn't allow hurt, harm, or danger to come upon us, Lord God. But Father, you brought us, Lord God, even again, once again, to study your word, Lord God. Lord, as we gather to study your word this evening, Lord God, we pray now, Lord God, that the eyes of our understanding, Lord God, be enlightened, that we may come to know your good and perfect will. We pray, O oh God, that your word find a resting place, Lord God, in our souls, Lord God, that we, O oh God, may throughout the days of our life, Lord God, will continue to uh, be like that tree that is planted by the rivers of water, Lord God. O oh God, we pray now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, um, that you decrease me, Terry, Lord God, that you may be increased in me, Lord God. Lord God, stand up in me, Lord God, and, and uh, speak through me, Lord God. Use my lips, Lord God, to express the words, Lord God, that you would have your people to know, God. Oh, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be made acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So on this evening, we're um, going to be looking at the uh, second chapter of 1 Samuel verses 1 through 10. And in many of the uh, subtitled Bibles, you will find Hannah's prayer, Hannah's prayer. So let us jump right into it. And the second chapter, verse 1 reads, Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumble are armed with strength. Those who are for hire themselves out for food, but those who were hungry, hunger no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pine away. The Lord bring death and make a lie. He bring down to the grave and raises up. The Lord send poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raised the poor from the dust and lift the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and have them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundation of the earth of the Lord's upon them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of the saints, but the wicked will be silenced in darkness. It is not by strength that one prevail. Those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder against them from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth and he will give strength to his king and exalt the horns of the anointed. Amen. So on tonight, as we study this prayer of Hannah, this prayer of Hannah um, may sound uh, just a little bit familiar because this, uh, when we look at the components to this prayer of Hannah, is actually a prayer of exhortation. Hannah is grateful for what God has done, but she goes on and she begins to exalt his name. 
she began to tell us about the attributes of God. We learned last week that Hannah, who was the wife of Elkanah, who also had a wife named Panah, Hannah was barren. And because of her barrenness, it caused her to experience great sorrow. And as they went to Shiloh to offer, uh, to offer up their sacrifices unto the Lord, it says that Hannah was so grieved that she neither um, ate nor drank. And she uh, went to pray before the Lord. And while she was praying, while she was pouring out her heart unto the Lord, Eli the priest noticed that her mouth was moving, but yet there was no words coming out. Because of Eli thinking that she had been drinking, he, he uh, questioned uh, why was she um, standing there in such a state. And Hannah explained to him that the 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 what she what he was seeing was not a woman who was a woman um who was um had some ulterior motives uh or a woman of irreproach, but she was a woman who was in great sorrow. And that great sorrow was because she was unable to bear a child. And after Eli um heard what her cry was, what her heart was, he 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 actually told her to that God had heard her prayer, remembering that Eli, being the priest, um, the priest was a representative um, of God. So the man of God was uh, letting her know that God had heard her heart cry, and that she can go away. That God um, God would um, meet her. And grant her her request. So we find that uh, this backdrop of this time in the history of Israel was during the time of the judges. The, during the time of the judges, the there were military leaders that were raised up to power when Israel um, would follow God, and um, he would everything would be going well and then they would fall away and as they would fall away God and they would pray to the Lord and repent to the Lord the Lord would raise up a military leader to deliver them from the hands of the enemy at this time Israel had no king so each tribe um, each tribe had leaders uh, family tribal leaders and so this is the time in which um, we find ourselves here um, in First Samuel, uh, first portion, this first portion of the book of First Samuel, because of there being no king, and because they refused to look at God as the King of King and the Lord of Lord, we find that Israel, oftentimes in their apostate state, as they fell away, um, each man was doing what was right in their own eyes. Because we recognize that when they came out of Egypt and um, Moses, uh, by the hand of the Lord, delivered them out of Egypt, he was their leader. He was their guy. He was God represented to, uh, for man on earth at that time. And then once Moses uh, uh, passed off the scene and once he died, then Joshua was the leader. And, and as long as Joshua was living, um, it, uh, the declaration that Joshua made, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The people followed God for the most part. But when Joshua in that generation had died, um, during the time of Judges, the people did what was right, um, right in their own eyes because there was no set leader that was the leader of all Israel. But each tribe had tribal leaders. And so that's the state that we find ourselves in this evening. So um, during this time, as Hannah goes up to um, and God um, uses the man Eli to tell her that God had heard a prayer and that she would deliver a son. And so she did. She did have a son. And, and just as she promised God in her prayer that after her son 
that she would um she wanted to raise him as a Nazarite, one that would never have a razor to come to his head and that would not drink any uh fruit of the vine, um which was a Nazarite vow, but he would be whole, you know, he would be lent back or given back to the Lord. And um, after she had the child, she um, spent some time, some years weaning him. And once he was weaned, she did just as she said. She presented that child back unto the Lord. So on our um, on the occasion that we find ourselves in, Hannah has now returned to give her sacrifice and to present her child back unto the Lord, um, which she left him, will leave him um, with the priest Eli. So let's jump right in. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background because the background is important because Hannah is doing um, a song. Of, she's doing a prayer, um, doing a prayer of praise. But it also you can say that she was um, praying a prayer of exhortation, a prayer in which she was exalting God. And in Hannah's prayer, it, it's a dual, we see a dual role because Hannah in much of the prayer, she's um, not only speaking about God um, being uh, the only God, the, the God of all knowledge, the God of all wisdom, she, she's actually uh, giving the attributes of God. And what I find interesting in uh, Hannah's prayer as we go through it, um, this is the same, uh, the prayer is, sounds very familiar to us of those of us that have uh, studied the book of um, Luke, the first chapter, verses 46, um, 46 uh, through 50, 48 through 56, where Mary actually um, does a similar prayer when she talks uh from that book, she it is known, it's labeled as the Magna Carta, where she goes on when she's told about the birth, um, that she would have the child, the Holy One, the Anointed One, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. She, she makes a similar exhortation and song of praise where she says her soul does magnify the Lord. That her soul does make the Lord big. And here, this is what Hannah is saying. My soul does magnify the Lord. My soul exalts the Lord. And when we are exalting the Lord, we are, we are actually uh, ex ex uh, worshiping him for who he is. Not so much for what he's done, but for who he is. And we're going to get into that a little bit this afternoon. I would like to tell you. One of the things with Hannah prayer, what we would recognize right away is that the prayer that Hannah prayed in um, second um, in first in uh, first Samuel, the second chapter, verse one through 10. This particular prayer, you can also um, find um, many of the same components as the prayer that Moses would pray in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, verse 35, talking about there is no God like our God. There is none like him, no one like him. So what we see is that um, what I really stood up in my mind is that Hannah was exalting the, the Lord and she was praying a prayer, a prayer that she probably had heard through her upbringing in the culture. But the difference is when Hannah is praying this prayer, she is praying this prayer out of a personal experience that she has with God. She has come to know him on a, on a different level because of what she had gone through um, in her life being a woman that is barren. And not to get too lengthy and too wordy, I do want to, um, to let you know that in stating in the beginning that the people doing what was right in their own sight because they had no no leader at the time, we recognize that um, the the child that Anna that Hannah had would become the child that would would be the last judge of Israel, but also not only was he the last judge of Israel, he also um, served in the office of the priest as well as a prophet. 
And here, uh, th this is the first time we will see the office of the prophet versus one that is prophesying, such as Deborah and Moses, who were prophets as well. But here we see the office of the prophet being brought forth because God would use uh, Samuel in the office of the prophet. He would be the one that would anoint the first king. So enough being said, let us dive right into the scripture. So Hannah prays, um, prayer of praise, which is also the basis of all these other um, prayers. But we recognize that this was done out of, of her personal experience with God. Oh, we, you know what I'm talking about. When God, when we pray to God, the thing that Eli told her last week that we learned that God hears your prayer. But um, Hannah doesn't just stop with just praising God for giving her a child. She goes on to to uh, praise God and exalt him for who he was. So Hannah prayer mentioned a number of God divine attributes. And that's what I want to focus on tonight. God divine attributes that is mentioned in her prayer. So when we look at... Um, First Samuel, um, the um, verse, um, First Samuel, second chapter, and we want to look at that second verse. It says, "There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God." And what we see there, um, she Hannah is speaking directly to the attribute of God is His holiness. There is no one like the Lord. And we also see uh, Moses mentioned that several times in his prayer. And um, many others um, when, when we go through our scripture. But even today, we know that there is no one like our God. We recognize that he and he alone is holy. We recognize that he and he alone is uh, pure and clean and without any sin. He is separated from all evil. There is no one like our God. He is holy. So when, when we look at that, there's something else that I want to bring out in that particular verse. It talk about him being, it says that there is no rock like our God. That, that there's no one that, that, is, that is the sustainer like our God. Our rock. He's the rock of our salvation. He's the rock of our deliverance. He's the rock of our strength. There is no one like him. So in verse number uh, three of that same chapter, uh, one of the things uh, Hannah brings out in that point is God omni omniscience. And here it says that do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is God who knows and by him deeds away. So he un, he's omniscience and his omniscience is that he possess knowledge, not because he learned it, because he already knows it. Isn't that good news that he's a God that is all knowing and that his knowledge is not all is not just knowledge of what does happen what will happen, but it's the all possibilities in between. God is all knowing. And it, it, here, what she's reminding us in her prayer tonight is that we don't have to keep talking so proudly and let our mouth speak with arrogance. See, Hannah not only is speaking of, of, of going through with what she went through with uh, what we would call uh, uh, enemy, such as Panah, she is actually, because you know, our enemies are not people, but uh, our, our, our enemies are, are, are is Satan, the, the devil, is, you know, he's the one that is our real enemy. You know, our wrestle is not against flesh and blood. 
it, it is never against the individuals that we see, but against uh, principalities and rulers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's according to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. So here, even though Hannah is speaking about enemies, she's actually doing a, a, a prophetic prayer. She's praying about the enemies of God who has been arrogant, who has been coming up against the people of God, who, who think that they are getting away. But what she wanted them to know that uh, the Lord is God who knows and by him deeds away. That means that he what? He is judging everything. He's the one that's sitting on the throne. Amen. So now let's go on. And I want to want you to go down to the seventh verse in that same chapter. Here, Hannah is going to talk about the um, um, omnipotence of God, and we know uh, on omnipotence um, of God. Let's go to um, chapter se uh, verse number seven. It said, "The Lord sent poverty and wealth; He humbles and He exalts." And when you look there, it says that God is the one that has all power in his hand. Man doesn't have the power that he thinks he has. No man has power over you. It's only God that has power to give wealth. Okay? And so what we see here is that his power is not derived from him uh, 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 trying to grab it as, as we see in this uh in our current situation, in our current uh, political atmosphere, where you have one party trying to get power over another party. Well, here, what Hannah is saying in her prayer is that God has all power in his hand. And that even, even those that... Um, uh, that perceive that they have a form of power, that that power we recognize is temporary and it has nothing to do with the eternal power of God. Amen. So in verse number eight, it talks about um, God mercy. She talks about God mercy. And verse number eight reads that he raised the poor from the dust. And he lifted the needy from the ash heap, and he set them with princes, and has them inherit a throne of honor. And it says, For the foundation of the earth of the Lord's, and upon them he has set the world. So, <coughs> excuse me, He's, we're speaking now of God mercy. God mercy. God has compassion. And he has pity upon those that are in de great distress. And even when a person involved themselves in a lot of situations that we cause ourselves, God had a mercy is still available for us. I love it. Um, the scripture tells us, um, I think it's Romans, the uh, fifth chapter, verse uh, eight. It said, God uh, commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That is his, his hand of mercy. That is God compassion and pity because he knew that there's nothing that we can do can, to save ourselves. And then oftentimes what we saw at, as the nation of Israel, they would get in situation oftentimes that they bought about because of their disobedience to God, that God would bring them because of his mercy that will endure according to the scripture forever. He, he would bring them out of situations that they, um, they had already got themselves into. And so Hannah here is just telling us how God have so much mercy and compassion for his uh, people. It says, for the foundation of the earth for the Lord's and upon them he has set the world. And when I think about that particular scripture, I think about the psalmist who write in Psalms um, 
24 when he says the earth is the Lord the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein oh in God good see it all belongs to him and it all he he deserve all the honor all the glory and all the praise and that even in the midst of of whatever trouble we find ourselves in even that Hannah being in the in the in the midst of distress, uh, because she was um, had prayed to God, received the son. God uh, uh, honored her to have this son. But not only did He honor her in having this son, she was a woman who recognized that it all belonged to God. She could, she could faithfully say because of her personal experience that she had with him, that he was the God that owned everything and that his mercy did, uh, was extended towards her. Amen. So let's look at verse number nine, because verse number nine speaks of the attribute of God faithfulness and God faithfulness says he will guard the feet of his saints. But the wicked will be silenced in darkness. God is faithful. He is faithful to himself. But not only is he faithful to himself. He, this is good news. He's faithful to his people. It says that he always does just what he say he's going to do. The scripture uh, tells us that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he need to repent. Because we recognize that whatever God says, it shall come to pass. And it, and here, set, um, Hannah brings out the, in her in her particular uh, this particular portion of the her prayer, verse number nine. She said, "He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked will be silenced in darkness." See. Uh, it, it seems sometimes that the wicked is getting away with everything, but just hold on for a little while and just keep on living. God has a plan that he has already established for those that he love that love him and that are called according to his purpose. Uh, the psalm is right. I believe it's in Psalms uh, 37. It said we don't have to fret against uh fret not yourself against evil doers and neither be envious of those that do in uh that work iniquity it, because the psalmist go on and say because they will soon be cut off from the land amen and um uh i hope that you're like me you're excited to see the attributes of god that when we when we exalt god not because of what he what he has done for him for us but for just simply who he is and how he's always for us and not against us and so verse number 10 speaks of god justice his attribute as being a just god and in this action um one um we know that he is perfect and he is divine and he is um, operating within his own established uh, righteousness. And he's, he is always right. That everything that he gives, he doesn't uh, waver. He doesn't show uh, favoritism. But he uh, actually is the God that is divine. And everything is, is done according, is done perfectly according to his will his own great will and it tells us in verse number 10 let's read that it said those who oppose the lord will be shattered he will thunder against them from heaven and the lord will judge the ends of the earth there's no one that uh have the right to judge uh but god um it tells us here that god is god has the final authority man judgment is only temporal but the judgments of the lord are are permanent and there are they are judges that have his judgment has been established from the foundation of the world because in him there is no injustice and uh the last portion of that it talks about from 1 Samuel, the second, um, second chapter, verse 10. 
it talks about uh, God attribute and it actually about uh, God attribute of being uh, sending forth the Messiah, the anointed one. And let's read that, that second last portion. It said, he will give strength to his king and exalt the horns of his anointed. So it says that God is the one that um, here we've already established that at this time, Israel had no king. Is their king was they should have been looking to God to be the king, but they wanted a earthly king, one that they can look to. Uh, here we see a twofold, uh, really a twofold prophecy: one that is immediate, and then one that was more futuristic. Immediate in that um, Samuel, as he um, would um, uh, be instructed by God. To anoint the first king. And we know that the first king. That um, that the people um, re, uh, uh, elected or wanted was Saul. But Saul uh, we realized as the first king. He was disobedient to God. He would rather offer sacrifice than to be obedient. And because of that God. Um, uh did not allow him to continue to be king, but he he had Samuel to anoint David, which was a man after his own heart. And so what we see here when it talks about he gives strength to the king, it was God who gave the strength to the king, to King David to sit on the throne. And it said he will exalt the horns of the anointed. So when we when we see that word Horns, it says he will exalt the horns of the anointed. That word horn there, he will exalt the strength. He will be the power behind the one that will become king. So that is your immediate uh, prophecy that um, Hannah is speaking about. But the futuristic uh, 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 prophecy that uh, uh, Hannah was uh, speaking about is that Jesus would come and he would be exalted as king of kings, that he would be exalted as Lord of Lord, and that the, he would operate in the strength and the power of the Lord. So here, what we see, Hannah, when we look at her prayer, her prayer of praise, her exhortation of praise, her ex, her, her, her heartfelt cry, uh, unto the God who had shown himself mighty in her life that allowed her to open up her mouth and speak of his goodness, his glory, and to be able to speak of his him being a just God, him being an on initia God, being a uh uh omni omnipotent God, being a holy God, being a faithful God, being a merciful God. And being a just God. These are the characteristics of God. And, and we recognize that um, uh, all of these attributes that Hannah speaks of. Uh, um, uh, mostly attributes that God alone shares. Not uh, some attributes that, um, that we see. Uh, uh, God allows those to be shared upon men. You know, uh, but these particular uh, attributes that are mentioned in Hannah's exhortation are attributes that belong to God and God alone. And what I want us to realize tonight that, uh, sometimes when, uh, we can be like a hammer, we can have, we can have a, a desire in our heart and we want that desire to come forth, uh, when we want it to come forth. Uh, Hannah had to wait several years before God opened up her womb that she may bear the fruit, the fruit of a son. And that this son that she would uh, bring forth would be one that would be the last judge. He would also operate in the office of a priest and he would be the first one to operate in the office of a prophet, not the first prophet, but the first one that operate in the office of a prophet. And what we see is that God timing is always the best timing. See, 
before when they went into the promised land, uh, uh, the land that God had promised them when they came out of Egypt that flowed with milk and honey. After they had gone through the campaigns of actually conquering the land and living out the victorious Christian life, they fell in a state of, of complacency and apostasy. Uh, and one day was in this state of uh, complacency and apostate. God, when they would cry out to the Lord, according to the book of Judges, that God would raise up these military leaders. And these military leaders would, would lead them to victory, lead them to a place that they would come out of bondage. But it was so temporary live because the people decided that they would do what was right in their own eyes. Isn't that so like us today that when God, when we get into trouble and God deliver us out, we soon find ourselves doing what is pleasing in our own sight. And here on our lesson tonight in this book of Samuel, as we just getting started last week, talking about Hannah and her prayer and her delivering her son Samuel. Now Hannah is dedicating her son back unto the Lord. And do you know that as a woman who was barren, a woman who had no child, see, it was so representative of the nation of Israel. They were barren because they was operating as a, 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 a nation that had no God. And uh, God is always for us. And even when we don't know what we need, he always send us what we need. And what God did, he sends, he places in her barren womb. He allowed her to give birth to Samuel. Samuel, who would be a man that would honor God and that he would, uh, he would uh, be a, a true prophet and he would be a priest. Uh, that was served under a true servant that was served up under Eli. He would, he would be a man that would begin to turn the people heart away from sin and turn them back unto God. That's what a prophet does. But and, in saying all of that, what I want us to get is that God brought forth Samuel at the right time. He brought him forth during a time when Israel was getting ready to transition. And, and when you look back through the biblical uh, history of the people of God, when God is getting ready to use a, a woman or a man, um, uh, bring forth a transition, there's always something brewing around the birth of that child. Whether it be a barren woman, uh, such as your Sarah, or uh, who would have Isaac, or if it was uh, of your uh, of of the trouble that uh, we saw with Moses being born during a time where the Egyptian children, I'm gonna say the uh, Israelite boys were being killed. There was, there's always a circumstances that is brewing around it, but God always bring forth what we need at the right time. Even when the scripture tell us at the fullness of time, Christ came forth to, to, as, as a man, he was 100% man born into, um, in, in, into, uh, born in the flesh, but he, he still was God. And, and it's only God that reckon that is able to, to judge the proper timing for when something needs to be done. That's a word for somebody tonight. Uh, don't let your delays make you feel like God has denied you. Denied you. Because just as God heard Hannah prayer, he hears, he hears your prayer today. And, and as he hears your prayer, the word of God, the scripture tells us if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. And we see that uh, Hannah's desire was what God desires was for his people. Hannah desired a child that she could give back to God. And, and, and God had a desire to use her child. That ought to be good news for some parents tonight. That that should be our cry when we have our children. That, that, that we 
at we allow as God bless us with those children that we raise those children up that we may give them back unto the Lord that the Lord may use them for whatever pur great purpose that he would have for their life but I don't want to end tonight without letting you know that Hannah prayed a prayer of exhortation she really exalted God she began not only did she exalt God in her heartfelt prayer about uh, uh, who God was and who God is, she began to prophesy about the, the, the life that this nation of Israel were, were about to transition to. They were about to have the, um, the uh, first king to come forth. And because of that, uh, God used this woman, this mighty woman of prayer that would, didn't mind turning to God in the midst of her trouble to look for him as, as the one that would bring forth uh, the, the answer to whatever her, her issues were. And, and I just ask on tonight that we be like a hammer, that we begin to exalt God in this time Tell the world, open up your mouth. Remember the first time when Hannah prayed, when Hannah was in deep sorrow? It said Hannah was praying in her heart. Her, uh, her lips was not, was moving, but there was no words coming out. But on tonight, we find out that Hannah is opening up her mouth. Exalting the Lord as being the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, that there's no one like him in all the earth. Not only is there's no one like him at all the earth, that he has all power in his hand, that he is faithful and he is merciful and he is holy and he is righteous. But most of all, he shall send forth his Messiah, which we have the benefit of already, uh, of seeing his, uh, we have the benefits of what the Messiah has already done. The anointed one of God who came to take away the sins of the world. So now, even as you go about in your day to day, don't close your mouth. Open up your mouth and let somebody else know the God that you're serving. The God who sets the moon and the stars up in the sky. The one who allows the sun to shine. The one that brings forth rain upon the earth. He's God. And besides him, there is no other. I hope you guys learned something out of this lesson tonight. Uh, and I pray that in your prayer tonight, even as you begin to meditate on the word of God, that you will begin to just every day, for the rest of this week, if you don't mind, if you would just wake up in the morning with a word of exhortation on your lips, uh, uh, just saying who God is in your life. Because he is, for me, he's king of king. He is Lord of Lord. He is the great I am. Yes, he is my the joy of my salvation. He is my strength. Ah. He is my peace. He is my hope. And I know we can go on and on and on. But I hope you guys got something out of the lesson tonight. And I pray that um, as you go forth, that you just always remember that God is still in control. Amen. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you on this evening, Lord God, for your word, your lesson that went forth, Lord God. I pray on this evening, Lord God, something was said to strengthen the heart of your people, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us through this prayer of Hannah, Lord God, that, Lord, that we can always pray, Lord God, we can always exalt your name, God. Oh, God, that your exhortation is to be heard off the, our lips, Lord God, to the world and mankind everywhere, Lord God. Oh, God, we thank you right now that you love us so much, Lord God, that, Father God, that you wouldn't leave us in a state that we're in, Lord God. But while we were yet sinners, Lord God, that you sent forth your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And, Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God, that, Father, that you've given us, Lord God, uh, a place, Lord God, that we can 
easily come to your throne of grace, Lord God, when we are in sorrow, Lord God, when we're in pain, Lord God. That, Father God, that we don't have to lose the joy of our salvation, Lord God. But, God, that we can lean on you, Lord God. We can, we can, we can uh, lean in and recognize, God, that you're faithful, Lord God. That, Father God, that you change not, Lord God. That, Father God, that you, oh God, are working it out for our good, oh God. Oh, Lord, we just so love you tonight, Lord God. And we just ask, Lord God, that you be with each and every individual, Lord, as they rest tonight, Lord God. Give them peaceful sleep, Lord God. But most of all, God, we ask, oh God, that you continue, Lord God, let us to have our minds stayed on you, Lord God. That, Father, that we might remain in perfect peace. Lord, we love you and we praise you on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.